Hi, my name is Bob Bierman. I'm the owner operator of Nipigon River Bear Hunts in uh, Nipigon, Ontario, Canada. And this tape that we're going to show you here it just shows us what we have to offer up there in the way of hunting. So sit back and enjoy the tape. Look at that bull there. That's a 60 inch bull. When he comes right up to a blind, and the guy's sitting with me instead of being in his blind, look at that spread right there. And he shows him off too. The guy decided to come with me that day and track a wounded one rather than sit in his blind, and he's about to walk over it right now. We would have had that. Anyway, I got some nice footage of him. He's still out there. This is just another marsh that we hunted. Kind of the typical kind of morning stuff we're looking for. There's Brian's moose. He shot that the last night of the season. And we found it next morning. Now this bull coming in. Yeah, this is a nice one too. Now I had the hunter set up so that the bull would walk right by him and I called to him and instead of doing what I thought he'd do, go up the grade, he turned and climbed right up over a rock and faces the hunter. You see his horns coming here. And he's got a long bull. So he has to hold his nerve on the moose. They're, they're seven feet apart right there. The moose is looking at him. And he has to hold his nerve for so long and then he finally gets a shot on him. The moose turns and he drops away to his left and exposes his whole side just perfect. But he's been sitting there facing that moose for so long, I don't really think this guy's John here. He's starting to come unglued a little bit because he doesn't pull his bull back far enough for one thing. And he hits him on the shoulder, and that's that. Now this bull here, I called him in uh, to the same uh, guy who had uh, shoulder shot the first bull. He comes in right into the guy John, and I don't know, he said he couldn't get a good shot, but I think uh, in hindsight he just was so afraid of, you know, shanking another shot, he just talked himself out of shooting because this bull turns right around the circle. He's only 10 yards from it right now. He, told, he turns for full circle in stages, so there's got to be a shot there someplace, yeah. There's one. And coming up is one better. There's one. And he doesn't he doesn't shoot. So finally the bull sort of gets smells a rat and heads for heads east. That's a moose wallow. One of my spots, I don't use it very much. And there's another spot I have a moose blind. This is the south end of Lake Nipigon. 100 miles long, that lake, 60 miles wide. Now here comes the bull. I called this fella in. One of three that morning. First one. Wades off to my left, getting ready to shoot. And I got him wearing a decoy and trying to film at the same time. Here he comes. And I no sooner glance over at Wade to make sure he's ready, and I see he's already drawn back and drawn a bead, so I gotta whip the camera back on the moose so I don't miss it. And he 
hits him dead center. Perfect shot. Arrows through both sides of the feathers are sticking out this side and the points out the other side. He stays on his feet for a while, but he's done. You can just, you can see there the feathers hanging out. And this is us coming up. The moose went down in that little patch of bush, we think. Pretty confident that he's right there. I've been talking about. Thanks, buddy. Awesome job. I've been calling you a Bob Moose man instead of Bob Bear man. That's my decoy. That's Myrtle. Another one. This is the same day. Now we got the one dead piled up over that hillside, and this one comes up. him look far. He's 30, 35 feet or something right there. He is close. But we've already got a dead one, so we're just doing this until we run out of uh, camera, which is going to happen here quite, quite shortly. We knew we were short.
Get him, get him. He's dead, whether we can find him or not. He shot through the liver. Had a lung and a liver. Should I turn down? Yeah. Yeah. John shot that moose last night, right at dark. The arrow's angled back. Looking at it when we got home, it's right through his chest. We know that even at the angle back, it's, it's, it's in the front of his chest good enough that it, the exit, there's no exit, but it's in, his, it's in his chest cavity. And we just found the arrow. We've been searching this place for an hour, checking there's no, too many moose tracks here, and then we finally figured out we got the right guy, and then we found the arrow. So this is his track. You can't see it, but I can see it. And we're just gonna film the last little, uh, I think he's real close, because I can smell him still. He'll smell, he's all pissed up, like piss in the roll in it. There he is. Howdy boy, John. Come on up. Woohoo! Oh, oh, oh. A little bit of luck involved in finding that one. See what I mean with smell? I can smell him? Can you smell him? Oh yeah, smell him real good. Well, me and Bob rode a boat over and did a 150 yard portage and got into a canoe and we got all set up and Bob went to calling and it wasn't very long and this boy got to answering and it didn't take long, he came right in. So, Bob had his pretend female moose on and <laughs> Myrtle. <laughs> Myrtle, that's Myrtle. Myrtle. And he came right in under the stand, probably about a 10 foot shot. And Bob was probably a whopping 15 foot away from it. So, yeah, that was that was intense, all right. Yes, it was. Knees shook quite a bit. And I'm very happy. Okay, now while we're going what, on the subject here, a fella. A TV show, uh, Haley Heath's Family Traditions, was here last week. A fellow with them, a real nice fellow named David Young, helped me put that tree stand up and wanted desperately to hunt there. And the weather would not cooperate at all. We just couldn't get up here. It was way too windy. So, anyway, David. <laughs> I wish you were here. <laughs> It was a good spot. <laughs> oh yeah, and as we looked for this moose, we saw a sign everywhere. Yeah. That made it hard yeah, to track him. There's so many tracks in here. 
What do we see? Ten beds, John? Oh yeah, beds every place. And we haven't gone, you know, in, in, in real reality, we haven't gone 200 yards. Right. All right, well, I guess we'll just get to, uh, we have to cape this and uh, bone it out and it's going to take us a better part of the day. Thanks a lot, Bob. Over here, welcome. Here we are, folks. Four hours later. <laughs> Moose has been packed in a, in a canoe, paddled across the lake, packed on our backs to this lake, and well, now we're going home. And this fellow here, John Boss, is a very happy man. That's he? for sure. <laughs> and I'm happy too because I don't have to carry that thing anymore. <laughs> Alrighty. Home, Jeeves. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a eagle's nest. Yeah, I see it. Possibly a osprey, but probably it's one or the other. Okay, Kevin just shot a moose here. We didn't have a chance to film it, but he dropped him over there, and we're going to go check on it right now. To your right, to your right. Nice going, Kevin. Bob brought me out here this morning about oh six thirty seven o'clock. I've been sitting here all day. And, uh, he come back in to get me. We was sitting there right before we went out. We heard this bull's horns hitting on the trees coming out. So we waited, and he come out here, and I just dropped him. Now is that? 
Been hunting for. It was our fourth day. Four days. Saw one cow. And we got our. We got our bull. Right on. So we're running out of light here. So we're gonna get fast and get this thing gutted and get out of here. There's the crew. Put the advertisement in there. Yeah. There's a cook one. Cook two. Cook three. Customer one. Happy customer. Yeah, happy customer. But we aim to please it. <laughs> yeah. Ah, that's for sure. My son and mom was still wounded, you know, and uh I can't. Kevin's last day at camp. Holy fuck Bob, you're soaked. Try and get as much meat off as you skin it. He's looking like 50, eh? We have to wrap up that car, that that uh, cape, yeah. and rope it. All right, see you in a 45 minutes, whatever it is. An hour. Last load. We're done. He's all here. Kevin's moose is in the truck. Second last day of the hunt. From McCann Lake, a creek. The weather is atrocious. It's probably 60 plus degrees right now in the morning. Moose are quiet. There's lots of sign. There are lots of them here, but we can't get one to vocalize. We're hoping to see one come out here where I. Uh, Zoom in on this tree here. Find it again. The bulls rubbed that thing right clean. Very recently. We found two rut pits on the way in here. And one we could smell a couple days ago, but we couldn't make them talk to us. So we're just going to keep trying here.
Thanks, Bobby. This is the second year I've been up here hunting here with you on a moose hunt. Um, came in last night, we found this hot spot. A little bull came in, about 40 yards. I got buck fever and missed him, shot low. Got lucky again today. We'd only been in stand about an hour and a half, two hours maybe, and uh, started hearing a grunt we've been calling. Bull came right down the trail, stopped at about six yards. <laughs> Stared right at the decoy. Done deal. He crashed here, not 15 yards from the stand. Real nice bull. I'm real happy. Thanks, Bobby. Appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure. I swam across the river. And I should be able to see my tree stand right. There, thanks. You know, there's a good chance he might still be alive because there's no birds coming out of there. There. Nice job, man. Thanks, Bobby. That's awesome. Come on, look at that dude. Ooh. Look at that guy, Bobby. That's sweet. A little bit back, but forward on the other side. Kill him fast. He didn't live long. Congratulations. Thank you. It's about 9 o'clock in the morning. And we just found the moose. It was shot last night about 7 p.m with this longbow right here. It's a big moose. This thing's got to be 800 pounds. Hey, I just got my first moose up in Ontario. Mm -hmm. Bob Behrman. Got him last night at 7 o'clock and uh, it's this morning, uh, what is it, Friday, my last day I would have been hunting. It's 10.30 and I plugged him right here and I come out the other side and he swam a river and went up here about 50 yards and dropped. So I got my first Ontario moose. And how does it feel, Mr. Kohler? I'm a happy man. Well, last night we're up on this uh, little point here, right on this bay, uh, this river of Lake, Lake Nithigan. And uh, Bob was uh, up on top of the tree stand ladder, and he was calling, and uh, we, were, we were there for a little while, and we heard just two grunts. And so I quick changed places with Bob. I got in a tree stand, and Bob walked down to the edge of the lake, and he didn't grunt again. So we stood there for about 15 minutes and Bob climbed back up on a ladder and called one more time and we heard oh, 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 three times. So we changed spots again. So I got up on a ladder and and uh, all of a sudden I see his rack coming off that little point. And he came off the edge of the water and Bob was monkeying around trying to get that uh, Mildred on his uh, chest. And 
he, this moose heard some little cracking over there and then all of a sudden that, that moose decoy came out. And when he saw that, he just, he, he got excited. And then uh, Bob made a, a, a cow call with his mouth and that, that thing just comes swimming across the river, grunting the whole way and gurgling water. And he climbed up out of the water and, and he uh, came up on the edge of the tag alders and he monkeyed around and he was facing me and he finally turned sideways and I, I, I hit him good and Errol came off the other side and he swam across the river and I got my first Ontario moose with Bob the Moose Man. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Thanks, Bobby. Okay, well, that was fun. That was quite a, a nice night. Okay, we just got the boom all quartered up. He's in the boat. And we're heading back to the boat landing. Oh, so here yeah. he is, Mr. Moose. Mr. Moose and Mr. Hunter. Our first moose ever. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice moose.